Hello and welcome back to Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Last time we dealt with the bandit issue in Chaldea and now I uh, wonder what's in store for us with a chapter title like Rescue. Here is a map model of a character we have not yet seen. And it's Rise! Fun fact for you guys, in the Japanese version of this game, Rise's name was actually Kilroy, which is pretty ironic because Rise is actually Healer, so having the name Kilroy is a complete opposite of what he actually does. Kind of funny if you think about it. I get the feeling that Tanya says that quite a lot. A letter for Titania. Uh-oh, Tanya does not sound very happy at all. I wonder what that letter could have said. Now we know that there's someone in the Grail Mercenaries named Walt. I agree, Oscar. Cowards indeed.
I agree with Oscar here. There can't be good consequences for ignoring the deputy commander. It sounds like Boyd and Ack are both already fighting. Yeah, Boyd really sound like the absolute model of perfection for Ike. Something doesn't seem right. There's only one bandit at the stronghold. I wonder why they want Titania so much. Sounds like they really want some revenge after the incident at Caldea. It's a trap! Here is Rise, and as I mentioned earlier, he is the healer of the Grail Mercenaries. Here is the priest description, and the priest band increases your growth rates of luck and resistance by 5%. I will be using Rise in this playthrough. He comes with the skill Serenity, and Serenity is like Tempest, except it halves the biorhythm effects instead of doubling it. But like Tempest, it's pretty much a useless skill and you can remove it from him the second you get access to skill removal. Now, before we start the chapter, I like to actually go up to the boss before every chapter and see if they have any droppable equipment as well as any other enemies. Now, in this case, the boss is a Speedwing. A Speedwing is an item that will increase your speed stat by 2. Now, I generally like to save stat increasing items until the end of the game to see if there's a unit I need to use them on to help round out their stats and cap them out in the case they would not have capped out that stat otherwise. Now, let's check to see if any other enemies have a droppable item or weapon. Here, this fighter up next to the boss has a steel axe that we'll be using for Boyd. This Marbadon up by Oscar has a Voldemort that'll be good for Ike. 
Okay. So we gotta keep in mind this fighter up here and this mercenary down here. Now, I would also like to get as much experience as I can for both Oscar and Boyd in this chapter. Now, I'll explain more of why in the next chapter. I do not want to spoil anything for you guys, which is why I'm not saying anything yet. Except for the fact that I just want to get them as much experience as I can in this chapter. So they'll be getting most of the kills. And I also want to be trading Ike's fighter band, or not Ike's fighter band, Boyd's fighter band over to Ike. Because generally whenever I play this game, for some reason Ike has a problem with his HP growth or he just barely misses capping it out at the end of the game. And I want to try to help fix that by equipping the fighter band. And also that extra percentage in his strength growth rates should help him cap out his strength a little earlier than he would normally cap it. There we go, we got the Vulnerary for Ike. Now let's trade the Fighter Band before I forget about that. Mm, I think I'll equip it, and I'll equip the Iron Sword as well. Let's check your ranges. I think I want to heal up Void. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Marmadon is actually going to go attack Ike. But that's okay, because we can bring Oscar back down and have him finish off the Marmadon. And here's Rolf. And now we know that Rolf is actually the little brother of Oscar and Boyd. Or maybe I can take that kill. Sorry, Oscar. Not a bad level up, though. Although I really wish he would start getting some strength at some point, so he could start doubling with his steel sword. I think I want to move Ike up one more space. Then I want to move Oscar down there and trade Ike to Vulnerary. There we go, Boyd. Ooh, I do not want Rise to be in range of that fighter. So I'll move him back. Oh, please do not kill the spider. I, I want that experience for Oscar or Boyd. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ike. And one of the few times I'll ask you not to kill something. And here's Titania. Yeah, Titania really does not sound very happy. Okay, now I want to check Oscar and Boyd. Because Boyd's level 3, I think I want him to get the kill. I was going to give it to Oscar, but I wanted to give it to the lower level. Distribute my experience a little more evenly. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, so close. So close to that level up. Just needed, what, six more points? That's 94? 94. I think I'm gonna put Boyd right there. Actually, can I do a little rescue train right here? Oh, so close. Wait, can I take Boyd? Oh, I can actually talk to Tanya. Yeah, Tanya really just does not sound too happy. Oh, I forgot to mention rescuing. Rescuing is something that I would like to say was introduced in the Telia series, but I cannot say that 100%. As I did not play the GBA games, although I am in the middle of playing Sacred Stones right now. But rescuing could be very useful for trying to get units from one side of the map to the other or get them out of danger. And whenever you rescue a unit, like you just saw with Tanya and Oscar, you can actually take that unit and then drop them somewhere within a space adjacent to you as long as they could be in that space and as long as they are lighter than the unit you are rescuing them with. See here. I want Boyd to get this kill right here. Well, something is better than nothing, and it is actually possible to get a level up with actually no stack gains at all in this game, which is not very good. Let's see. I think I'll trade that extra iron sword Void has to Oscar for right now to try to more evenly distribute things. And then I'll give Void the Seraphoid. And then I want to check your range and the Myrmidon's range. So that way I can heal up Ike. We'll put Tanya in the thicket over here. And this thicket will actually increase her void by 10 and her defense by 1. But it's not like she'll need those slight battle increases anyway. Now she's pretty overpowered to this point in the game. There's a critical hit. It was super effective. Oscar loves his criticals in this playthrough. Let's see, I think I want Boyd to deal with this Myrmidon. Can the boss? No, he can't. Okay. So we'll move Boyd right here. I don't think he should get doubled. I should have checked that before I moved him. Let's see, seven, seven. No, he should not get doubled because they have the same speed. Speaking of doubling, if I forgot to mention in my last video, you can double your opponent if you have, I believe, four more stat points in speed than your opponent. It could be five, but I believe it's four. If Titania, Titania will double that Myrmidon because she has double the speed that that poor Myrmidon does. Let's see, if Ike gets about two more points in speed, he'll be able to double that Myrmidon. So Boyd should be safe here. Oh yeah, he's very safe here. I think I want Boyd to actually get the kill on the Myrmidon. And then I want Ike to take out the boss. 
Because like I said before, I want to try to get Ike to level 20 as quick as I can. So that way I can try to focus on my other units before Ike's forced promotion. And then I want to heal, even if it's just one hit point worth of damage with Rise, because Rise will be getting 10 experience points every time he uses his staff or his stave. His staff? His staff. And I want to try to get Rise promoted as soon as possible. Bring in a canoe. I canoe. Ikanu, however you pronounce the boss's name. I am not the best with fire emblem name pronunciations. There we go, Ike. And then we can have Ike finish him off here. Yeah, you do. You shouldn't have been kidnapping children. Oh, so close. Two more experience points for that level up, Ike. And with that, we have defeated the bandits. Wow, Tanya is not very happy at all. Not a good idea to make her angry. Oh, uh -huh, poor Rolf. Are we really surrendering to these bandits? What was that? I am too. Ooh, 
Who's this? It's Shinnen. And Gaytree. <laughs> Poor Gaytree. Flagging behind everyone else. But I actually like Gaytree. Gaytree is my favorite armor knight of the entire series. <laughs> Poor Gaytree. <laughs> Poor mess. And here is our bonus experience display. This will be showing us how much experience we gain after each chapter based off of certain criteria we have to meet in each chapter. Some chapters have more criteria and extra conditions we can meet to earn more bonus experience than other chapters do. Now I'll be explaining more of what bonus experience is once we get to our first base. And with that, we end the chapter. Join us next time on Fire Emblem Path of Radiance.